An Anthology of Feelings, Volume 1, Superstar, by Jack Letzel Musawi Wolf. If you'd like to have a physical copy of this book, please do support me by clicking the link down below. Without further ado, let's start reading. One humiliated man can turn chaos, frustrations and pain into elegance and beauty, making sense out of confusion. An audio version of this book is available on my YouTube channel and Jack Letzel Wolf, if you are interested to hear my feelings by my own voice. The artworks, including the painting, my stars, on the book cover are owned by me, the author and copyright holder, and are available for sale on my website. The contents of this book consist of Part 1, a letter from the author, Part 2, refugee, Part 3, daffodils, germane to hopes and dreams, Part 4, autumn leaves, my secret garden. Part 1, a letter. Greetings, traveler. If you will, I am a self-taught artist and a poet. A secret disciple of Shakespeare, for a reason my memoir shall reveal. An Arab-Australian refugee with a Bachelor of English Literature, a survivor and sole traveller of freedom in a journey where I explore the world and myself in it to aspire as well as inspire. I could have chosen the other path when I was homeless. However, no excuses stress the king of trauma in me, Australian dreams and Australian dreams. No need to change who you truly are for the sake of survival and ditch sincerity due to anger. Art is the definition of life and life is imperfect, but imperfection and chaos can make a beautiful piece of expression such as the symphony of drama, life. Every color of choice and every splatter of paint by my brush and every stroke of ink by my pen is a face, a feeling, a thought, a dream, a memory, a curse or a remedy. So whether people want to appreciate my feelings and hopes or not, that will never matter, for if you have a dream, you become your own fan if nobody wants to. I believe that it is up to one's decision whether to turn ugly and dire experiences into something beautiful, bright and meaningful in the end of the road with pride, like a hero, for I have come from a broken home and had gone through all kinds of hardships growing up in the most damned cult on this planet. A little about which my book, The Homeless Photographer, offers a peek into for now until my memoir is ready to be shared. A victim of rape? Check. Domestic violence? Check. Parental negligence and abandonment? Check. Bullying and harassment? Check. Other? Check. I had been underappreciated and manipulated with verbal and physical abuse from everybody around me whose responsibility was supposed to be consolation and protection. Surviving two suicide attempts and going homeless thrice for three years straight. But I always insisted that I am never allowing my past and all the disappointments and pains I had to face every single day define and determine who I am to be because I am a most stubborn man. For I am the only one who can be in control of my life and my mind, the faces I make in the mirror. I have all the rights and excuses to go mad, and perhaps I did, but I am at least still trying to stay wise in the way I talk and the way I walk, in the aim to be good for good. I shall walk the length of my journey with my dead heart still beating with life somehow, and my crown of pride intact around my pate passing my comic yet charismatic energy, sublime patience and glorious strength to those who need it the most, such as myself, shooting towards a better future like a star, free from the drama of silence, free from tears, free from fears and crippling anxiety. So one day I shall be the superstar I have always dreamt to be, as I build my castle quietly. But what does it really take to become a superstar? Mayhaps I already am. With this broken piece of my heart, this book, I would love to bring forth my plateful of emotions I gathered from my phone's notes that I recorded down during homelessness day and night to the table. An old library of feelings and thoughts in the shape of poems and artworks, all of whom I am downsizing into this collection of anthology series of books. Be good, and I wish you prolonged health and easier, prosperous life. I. Part 2. Refugee. I wrote an enigmatic foursome of bits of lion, shiver and heart and utmost a breed. I found a light in which my breathing slows and full stop. I made the best decision so I munch a spit up greed. Following the shadows of the moon at night is dome struck. I shame the very roots of nonetheless and so on wicked trees. The darkest phase of my reflections face is so corrupt. Poisons the very indisputable, the monk of tears, home. 
I won't take myself back home. I will singe my chest with Ona. Oh? Nah. Won't you see me for gone? Melting beneath the sunlight, I am feeling bankrupt. Causings of numerous blows. Fidgety self-pity if in heat. Part 3. Daffodils. Germane to hopes and dreams. The lingering easing scent of polished wood on this old tram must have painted too many a smile on tensed and soiled tired faces such as mine. I believe we've developed from apes by philosophy of thinking about the self, society and the universe. Philosophy is the art of thinking we humans were gifted by nature. Without it, you're thoughtless and an ape. Thinking is a simple deed that always resolved the complicated. Knowledge is not a curse. But the reason why apes reached up and turned into what we have come to call us what turned the punk with no regard to morale, such was I, into this understanding and content, so much better a man, changing an angry, hateful idiot into a dignified pacifist. The golden rule is to treat people the way you want to be treated. Choose for others what you would choose for yourself. Isn't that common sense? If you have a problem with me, talk to me in person if you dare. You are missing the wrong person. Because my dream is to be a superhero, not only a superstar. For all the times I've stopped violence with knowledgeable eloquence alone. But the cowards keep barking to themselves, their tails between their thighs and shoulders hunched when confronted, their eyes incapable to see into yours. To use your past as an excuse for your behavior is cheap. Do you want to see the meaning of true deep anger? I could let loose the monster in me to rip your flesh off your face if I chose to. I just never found a reasonable rationale to inflict something evil upon anybody. It's called choosing to be the king of the horse, the conductor of my emotions. Don't test me. I have been having bizarre split-second dreams wherein I feel closer to the truth, if any. In my dreams, I can do anything, become anybody. I know. I have ideas, and everybody sees what I can accomplish. I saw the patterns between these dreams in my sleep. My eyes awoke. I was nodding with a smirk, very much sure that although I am a recluse and always had been, I can still try to make the dreams of the past come true. After all, I am a superstar like everybody else. I like sleeping and trying to make sense of my strange dreams, which I've already started to enjoy in the nightmares just the same as I've grown so used to the dark. I don't discriminate between black and white and accept whatever comes at me as is, yin and yang, as I decide whether to believe in one or not the fact that I am a whole supernova, the black hole itself. Things could have been worse. Stay positive and count your blessings. Somebody else somewhere finds you lucky and oh how they wish they were you. The way myself in the past looking at me here would. Never bite the hand that feeds you. No matter how things are, forgive and be thankful. As an Arab refugee part of the pride community, there is a strong reason, not an excuse, why I had to leave behind me a wealthy country where I had to live so filthy poor growing up that old and ragged clothes made a blanket and a pillow on hard cold tiles in a basement without windows to a point where I did not mind going homeless if I did succeed to run away from home which to my utter surprise I did escape alright but also found myself homeless indeed later in Australia as if I knew although I am too far away now I still hope that I wouldn't be found and returned just the same when I've been living a whole different life now, a new fresh start, an opportunity to a better future at least. At last, I was now free once and for all. I've made it. I did it. My own damn way, Frank Sinatra. Life is about choosing between hate or love, between opening or clenching your fist, especially if you've been dumped and beaten. For I've had all the rights to choose to be deviant and hold grudge against society. But I chose the easier life in which I don't have to hide, so I can feel so much better, freer, at ease while venturing through life, exploring freedom. And so I've been in a battle with a dark abyss of thought, ever since opening my eyes, but still fighting the hardest I possibly could, so not to let it consume my mind into a singularity, not to get, like Elvis Presley, so overwhelmed that it takes my life eventually. For Elvis, I've held back my tears, 
I won't let him down and I must stay stronger than love. Although next door to him, I am a long-term tenant in Heartbreak Hotel, the thick walls of existence thinning between us. Climb your way back out of the hall and don't be a fool of a defeatist. Reclaim your life, rockstar. I tell this to myself every day and that is the main reason why I am this full of life still. The Japanese way, by merriment and willing to age. The least I could do is try rather than feel sorry. What holds me back is dwelling on the past. If I could only erase pain from the face of the universe, the only thing ever cared about me. I must be the universe experiencing itself. The first day I've breathed the Australian air into my lungs, to me, was the first time I've ever breathed. The birthday in which I opened my eyes for the first time. I was now alive for the first time. Finally, I can see. I was half a human now, alive. In my first years here, when I was studying, I was such a lost lamb as nobody understood me. Ba ba. I got into English literature because I wasn't given a choice and I dreamt to tell my story now. But the day I started taking reading seriously was when I've come to be homeless way after. Because I was so bored that all I could do to stay sane was to actually read. Read meaningfully like a human could. I've just recently got news that there had been hauntings going on in my home country. For any traces of the brilliant rainbow flag. Failure facade of a democracy by which there is no safety for their very citizen the future of a sinful country i am forced to represent who try to make me think i am the sin scribble of pencil this is their problem now i am not sorry oh but where do i go if i'm shunned by my own people the place i was supposed to call home and so i had to travel far far away to a foreign land where diversity is understood to be good for economy Democracy should be run by better educated people so there could exist hope. Instead of feeding people with lies and teaching generations how to compare and compete ever since as young as one starts developing conscience. Think the golden rule, kids. No, because they don't like the colors. Cry and start over. Let the children be creative and expressive. Our job as humans is to explore and create, but they deprived me from innocence and deprived my life from colors, took me away from art. Everyone move, lay down your respective lives, be dismissive to be cool, for a fight starter makes an insecure hypocrite, the way some conservatives hate and rage for being in fear to admit their doubts about freedom, in fear to reveal and confess, in fear to be put down mocked and laughed at, excluded the way they exclude the different, those most vulnerable, whose suffering in life means nothing to them except a punishment from God. How dare they use the fact that we go through pain and injustice as a weapon against us? Leave people alone. Tell me what are you looking for by this misconduct. The answer will be insightful and helpful to nobody else but yourself. Go out there and live. Don't punish people who are living because you don't want to live. How more pitiful do you want to be? They can't tell people the truth, being the one true source of money. Although the secret is right there, right here, in your wallet, in your phone, everywhere. Surely you're not that blind. They can print money as much as they want. You're welcome now. Good luck making a living out of this obvious finding. Bees in a society think that they can't manage without a queen that it is the queen who gives them a purpose and could guide them to the greater future that by sitting around she's somehow making life easier it is possible we're being observed by unknown entities the way a beekeeper toys with a beehive why do i always meet with a lone lost bee at my life's biggest turning points what is the universe trying to tell me here surely that i'm that much of a hard worker that my life should be prosperous if I stay focused? Or am I these very bees I come across? Bzz, bzz, bzz. <laughs> Where are we even going really? And what are we going about for? I shall find a way to make honey on my own. Because ants can't produce honey. I shouldn't dress like a bad apple, but live my life as a homeless peacock instead. The way I am. Who stands out and mesmerizes so I go to places. 
to reach up for better apples one day. But if I wanted to live in the beehive, I must first pretend to get along and make a bee out of myself, to achieve what I'm aiming for, to squeeze myself through. Think it, become it. I thought it, I've become it. I am thinking it, I am becoming it. I will think it so I could become it. Think of a way around it. If you want or need to soften your heart, feed the poor to start. Looking at the mirror at the person before me, I've never seen how my face looked like with that most determination. And it inspired me because I looked cool. I didn't think I was cool because I've been bullied on the daily. At home, at school, at work, anywhere I'm present. Why? Because they hate the fact I'm as cool as Jim Martin? Sad how many people don't want kids because they doubt they're not good enough to be parents. Maybe because people made them feel like they are incompetent, like they did with me. Nobody is anyone's enemy. But people think so because society made us feel this way. So let us not make them win because these people do not care about love like we do. People should be goal-oriented with a purpose, not mean without a purpose. An old villager once said, if a human being treats another human like an animal, then it is but a matter of great regret for us all in the whole world. If this sort of ideation is drilled in schools instead of patriotic propaganda, the world could have become so much better a place to live in, and the poor, innocent people did not have to suffer. The vile of Hitler and other folks could have never been and never will be. Anne Frank could have made it and become a worldly celebrated pacifist of an author because her diary couldn't change this world yet, because we can't simply change history with peace at ease. When politicians had taken ownership of it all, greed, 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 hunger for money versus the hunger for food. Be curious and you shall be happy. I say this to myself in the past before going homeless, for reading had healed my very essence when knowledge was my only source of food most of the days. Then I started to panic when I saw that my ribcage was starting to come out of me in public bathroom mirrors, my sharp bones bulging and made me realize that I was really not doing okay. But I made myself from the future a favor, the self I am now, by allowing whom I was in the past to become a much, much better person, by being there for him for emotional support. I thank myself for going homeless, for the great self-development, but not the recurrent heartache and scarring memories, the fear and paranoia. All I ever wanted was to feel I'm home. All I ever ask for is to stay safe. I've been a baby bird left alone in a nest waiting for protection. If the internet is used wisely, one learns all kinds of knowledge and then meets the best of people from all around the world, without having to worry about a ticket or a visa, when the whole globe is cupped in your hands. Space, too pictures of the galaxy, the true Her Majesty, the universe. Educate yourself the right way, the way I did, and still do. Don't use the internet to provoke sorrow. Don't be pitiful, then complain that you feel pitiful. Don't do this to yourself, then punish others for your lame decisions. When I was homeless, all I used the internet for was the free Wi-Fi sometimes when I got lucky was spread inspiration and joy for people online, otherwise watch and download positive materials for myself. Maybe it was a way for me to stay blinded about my dark reality, the fact I had so much pain. Laughter is a worldly language that brings people together and that is good for economy. We must improve our social welfare the right way to see the better world, by abolishing greed or simply accepting the way everybody is, their virtues and help healing their flaws so they can survive another day and be productive to society. Accept people, don't make anybody feel bad. It bothers me, it bothers everybody, it bothers you. Read my words, my wounds, meaningfully. Don't be another idiot, we've got enough of them ruling our lives for nobody's benefit except themselves. One who decides to control others is a failure of self-composure. Aboriginal people are not only cool, but their eyes carry such kindness and innocence the real eyes of humanity we've lost, their fashionable outfits and dances so fun and creative to put together. Sometimes I want to craft outfits made from whatever nature provides around. What is it in good people that pisses bad people off so much? Why can't those who plan evil get a life and pull their shit together? Such an embarrassment and disgrace. Utterly redundant. A waste of human intelligence. Losers, never winners. 
and you you don't know anything because you're what? wasting your time without education I've left a job in a restaurant once because everybody from managers to kitchen like to gossip 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 to a point where I've noticed that I was starting to get involved because that was all they talked about but I've decided one day to have enough of it all and quit right there and on the spot so I wouldn't lose my sincerity one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life no regrets and good riddance be careful with whom you surround yourself with be careful when building your character plan your future ahead on your own and take off when you find the right time it's not selfish it's called independence by looking for a way out of misery as for controlling people it is precisely this just stand up for yourself as after doing so for the first time you'll see how easy it actually is to speak up and how rewarding for you and your personal growth I've had one of those bosses who bullied me at work and before everybody else in the team because they loathed anybody too kind and happy I saw the same happen with many others like myself when I've changed that day by changing myself and speaking to this bad manager privately tell them you don't want to be treated in unprofessional ways firmly with utmost confidence and an eyebrow hanging others started to respect me when I started confronting them on the spot ever since this had changed my life and ended my anxiety altogether growing up nobody around me could have made a role model for me to follow so I've taught myself how to be smarter and did it myself becoming my own role model as well as raise my own siblings whom I am now very proud of leaving them behind for my freedom felt very hard and selfish but changing my life had eventually changed them and now everybody is happy accept yourself and everybody else and you'll eventually be rewarded by being accepted too if not then bad for them it has nothing to do with you those who don't accept others don't realize that it is themselves they cannot accept oh please remove the silhouette of self-entitlement from the perfect picture of togetherness it ruins the excellence of white like a most stubborn black splatter of the spilled ink of envy Bob Ross said that a mistake on a canvas is but a happy accident so true for me as a lost soul who couldn't simply fathom what he wanted to really paint but thanks to all my mistakes I have just started living my dream although a bachelor of age my flowers flourishing slowly at last after going through the hardships of drought and that is the edge of the cliff to my death surviving suicide attempts twice and homelessness thrice I cannot be happier now that I've become more grateful can I? happiness takes different forms and courage can be happiness too even if nothing felt like happiness happiness I've learned is everything else around me I am only glad to have been healthy and capable still to smell the scent of mud drenched after rain glad that I have my sight to see the best of day and the better of night my ears so I could listen to the song of the ocean and the cries of the birds time and time again with a love and cigarette I watch all kinds of people from my window at 3 in the morning with their noisy trucks or 12 in the afternoon ringing their bicycles because the idea of living had started to fascinate me as it helped me start to feel alive at last making my heart melt like a scoop of mango ice cream made with passion in the sharp rays of summer going through homelessness made me realize something very important that nature is our truly only home who shouldn't need a flag making my issues with belonging part with me we're all made of originals stateless in the end everybody will pass as a migrant like me when I chose that my life is my own business and my freedom is my adventure insisting that somebody should believe in what you believe in is utterly bizarre and it makes everybody uncomfortable do smile through confusion with me so I could be happy for you I wish with all the energy left in me that I could have the power to erase the evil of hatred and distrust ask my tattoos my angels of truth if I am to return to my home country where I am not accepted by my people I am to be prosecuted and fined for simply trying to live as myself fined to be free to lead a good life to live and perish happy something is awfully wrong when they try to make harmless people pay for the paths they choose in life why would I have to have the black and glorious waves I was born with shaved because my hair is too curly and I'm a man too firm in nature shouldn't the butterflies be butterflies let the cherry blossoms dance in the wind let the fish breathe in the water my feathers belong to me and they are mine to decide whether I want to keep I'll keep preening my plume with pride I will for I'm a bird I can fly if I want to I've never begged when I was homeless 
I sang in the open air without any instrument, with a little cardboard in hand. Any penny or two would do, with a bashful happy face drawn by my cold hand. That is how much of a hard worker I am. Life shall be earned back if you actually make the effort to solve the puzzle instead of sitting around begging for help. Help those needy who deserve your charity. I've met some others who were so ungrateful that they've cursed those generous enough to spare them some of their change between their teeth like demons. But although I was also homeless, I was so disappointed that I've had no choice but to keep myself away from them, the people who understood me the best back then. I still stumble across some of these bad people in the street, and they see me living the better of life now on the other hand. I shall only hope that they would learn from me and stop begging and do something. I've never let myself use somebody else's sweat. Thank you for every single stranger who stopped to listen to me, acknowledged me every morning, honked their skura, and rolled a cigarette for me without exchanging a word, passing compassion, bought me warm coffee, fed me with a bag of groceries, believed in and encouraged me. Otherwise I would have actually tied the noose on that ominous tree I've always slept next to so cold that I was as stiff as a frozen shrimp in a freezer, the chirping of possums keeping me company, and the wise owl who washed over me when I'm at last asleep. I wish I could meet them again to say thank you. Thank you, universe. The universe provides. The universe provides. The universe provides. When you are homeless, there are only two paths to take, to ruin or fix your life. And I had fought the long three years trying to stay on the right path. Now, after all the drama, I was rewarded with peace of mind and serenity until money introduced me to the anxieties of poverty and all the fears of an uncertain future. Fantastic music and laying on my well-done bed, a pillow between my knees and a charming smile on my face. It is good to be thoughtless often, enjoy nothingness and be silly, that's life. Embrace your inner child. I stretch my arms and hug my head like a kitten while napping. I bury these seeds of pain in the muck of confusion and water them on the daily with the tears of hope so myself could grow my baby pet. Grow so one day I could blossom and see the fruit of all that I have sown throughout the years at last. So the tiny speck of white light I have harvested in the black depths in my heart illuminates into a rainbow one day like the colors my broken glass trophy from my suicide attempt night on my bottom dancing award day makes across the wall every sunny morning it reminds me that although my heart had been shattered to pieces i am successful not a failure a beautiful glass trophy still despite that i'm broken my past being so the many butterfly effects in my life the butterflies whose fateful wings fluttered past me I have followed, whose power could change one's life into different shapes every time, the spontaneous decisions I had to make and risks I had to take, none of whom I shall ever regret. I mustn't. I can't. Haunt me. I am but an abandoned pet, being observed, going through pain without mercy, in need of all the love people around me never showed me growing up. But I realized that in the end, loving and caring myself alone helped me. I am a magician. I do not need anybody. I bemoaned alone instead of pointing fingers and blaming this or that. By embracing the philosophy of absurdism. I'm not going to worry myself about whether I will go on living than passing alone. Anyhow, I trust in Mother Nature who had always been looking after me. Here's to joy, to nobody to celebrate anything with. I wish myself the happiest birthday every day by making the bed. Oh, silly, silly me. Writing always makes me feel too funny. I can only imagine how our planet looks like swarmed with satellites, space, debris and rubbish. Look yonder, Mars. That is our mother, Earth. It saddens you to think how oblivious her children had been of her, the parent who had been too good to them. But they had been bad, too selfish and ignorant to even remember all about her. Behave, pick after yourself, throw your trash in the bin. These damned consumers and their waste, the waste of society, the true waste of society. Spotting a queen bee is a symbol of wealth. They always said ever since the ancient times, good luck and prosperity. 
I cowed to the generous guests quietly and set her free outside through the window so she could have another opportunity in her humble life the way I would have helped myself when my frail body was beginning to die. Be grateful, I have never had a shoulder to cry on, never anybody to lean on, to save me with compassion, never had any kind of privilege, none of it. I had nobody and I had nothing. An excellent piece of life advice is to confront your fears to overcome your undignified self. For the more broken, the more unbreakable you shall be, Though the stronger, the weaker sometimes, the weaker, the stronger too. So what if you made mistakes when everybody makes a fool of themselves every day? People forget the way you forget people. People forgive and those who would not are as good as nothing. When I faced some of my fears, I found peace. It was addictive that I wanted more of it. Be a role player, play, pretend. I have faked it until I made it. And I could go on doing so if I want to, because life is a stage and we are the performers. But we are the whole cast and none of us is the protagonist. I learned that when I am feeling a little off, all I need is a touch of mother nature to remember how it feels to be alive. Even if I was standing for half a minute in a sunny corner in the buzzing city when buildings cloud the meaning of sky as a whole. The only three things I have missed from the time I was homeless are the amiable scent and sounds of nature, not having to stress my hair out about the rent and all the bills, and having plenty of time for myself without being rushed. The fresh air. The way two lovers shy into each other's eyes and lose their senses for being caught in a cosmic trance of love deserves that the whole universe had to exist. Two pigeons engaged in a kiss at sunset. I went through all what gives a man the right to end up a hateful, angry junkie. But I have always chosen to be soft-spoken and as lovely as a teddy bear, as a fluff humanified, very sensitive to hate, but more powerful a writer. Idiots complain about their coffee while the poor play with the dirt on an empty stomach. I know hunger ever since I was little, but I have never brought myself to say redundant things like no food, no mood. Even when I was homeless, I always smiled through stomach ache when all I had was a green apple a day. People are spoiled when they are too spoiled. That is what happens when you give people an easy life. Everything is simply never enough for them and they do not appreciate comfortability at all. Thank you for the benign shopkeeper who had given me the apple for free when I was only 15 cents short. I am sure he saw it loud and clear on my face how much he made my day back then, back when I don't regret anything and shan't. Pain is the reason all these thoughts I've piled in my phone's notes when I was bored and lonely ever since homelessness and continues to be a habit to this day. And all my paintings have even started to become. And for me to succeed as an artist, the way I have always dreamt, now my once comforting thoughts are compiled into prints I call books of my own, the way I also dreamt. When life stomps on your head onto the ground, it is but a time for change, for you to start standing up for yourself when nobody would. When there is nobody who wants to give a hand or support your back, truth is, you do not need to prove yourself to anybody. But without you knowing, everybody else is cheering for you, amongst whom is I. Hardship taught me a very valuable lesson, and that is, society will hate you anyway, so go full, berserk, unusual. Because being special and different outside the box is what will bring you joy, prosperity and honor, the freedom and bravery of being an individual. Watching a thinking human is the most fascinating thing to me. I believe that it is one's decision what words should be said and actions should be done that reveal their wits the way the clear stream of river reveals the fish below the surface. How mature you really are not how immature yourself or others think you are. Thinking is a naturally attractive energy that makes you a pigeon's tamer. Overthinking is not a synonym, but an antonym that makes you a people pleaser, on the other hand. On tramp to nowhere, my day was getting darker, but a toddler's laughter brought the sunlight back into the dark chambers of my heart, pierced my shrinking bubble of fears. Did I lose you or did you lose me? My past friends forever gotten rid of, along with the past. 
The bird brains bullied me for purely joining bottom dancing even, being too feminine a sport for a guy, when they never even exercise. Bottom dancing had fixed my posture and changed me into a whole new, better person, that I started to lead a clearer, more meaningful life by waltzing amongst the stars, my dreams without fear of people's judgmental eyes. Although a most broken being to walk the earth, dance sport made a more decent, mature, confident man out of me. Within a week, turned an obnoxious young man into me, the person writing eloquently today. Somebody I never knew I could be. And made me determined not to see life the way Edifetus does, succumbing to the fear of failure. I chanted to myself, don't be Edifetus, every day that I have overcome homelessness as a whole. And even worse, my crippling social anxiety. Would you believe that I used to go kicking bins and breaking bottles in the street? I did not lose you. You have lost me. You did not deserve me. I never deserved you. I wish I could do something to ease your pain. But if I could erase somebody's painful memories, it would be mine that needs to go first. For my traumas made me so doubtful when I am trying to connect with people again now. Because they have been hurting me, the merrier they keep seeing me. Keep envying me because I stand out. Keep barking names together instead of towards me because my aura threatens them and tickles their pitiful insecurities. And this made me doubt my feelings every day before. But I have had enough and stood up for myself one day and my perspective changed forever. And that was when I became my own hero. My goal now was justice. To a point I was capable of stopping big, aggressive and violent, fully grown bearded men from fist fighting, although I am but such a small petite being in the middle, merely by a firm but non-aggressive confrontation, communicating with language. Life is a challenge for you to find your worth by understanding everybody's worth, not by throwing the coward's fist, but exchanging philosophies to reach a middle ground. Raving alone every weekend once upon a time when I struggled with my fear and loneliness, I realized that by using a word or two, I have the power of making people reconsider their words and actions in such a way that they cannot bring themselves to hurt me further. I close my eyes as I sip on jasmine tea for emotional and physical relief and the scent helps me sigh better. Big and deep breath out of my body. I call this the tea high when your soul is fluttering like the haze of summer. Dolly Parton once said, don't get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. But it is hard to make a life when you struggle to make a living. No matter how hard you try to enjoy every hour of the day, because the goal is to find peace, not happiness, by seeking the peace of mind, happiness shall follow on because it is a consequence to work hard now and live later. Or to live now and live later? The answer is to work hard towards the latter by sketching your next plan with a smarter purpose. My mother always said that everything is beautiful in its due time, that patience is key for relief, that good things come to those who wait, that calamities are overcome by endurance. Her story and mine and many others are solid proof that all you need to do is believe in your power and yourself, especially when no one does. No matter how hard it sounds, because your future self is looking up to you now, train yourself until you master patience. Become one of us, patience humanified. Excuse my intrusion to your thoughts, but I think that you are a lovely somebody many would favor as a genuine friend. You just have to get out of your comfort zone because in reality it can be a danger zone. Slowly but surely inject yourself into the very muscle of freedom of expression. And if people liked you for it, hooray. If people didn't, hooray. If not, even better. For nobody gives a hoot. Turn the feelings of shame they delude you with out of envy into pride and haughtiness. Your best revenge, your success. The more they hate you, the louder you must laugh. Roar for being unusual is a gift, not a guilt. How lucky it is not to be one of them, miserable. How lucky it is to be you, genuinely one of a kind. When I was locked in my literal box of a room, with bars installed as if I was prisoner, not a son, so I don't keep running away. The only thing that made me hang on into hope was the internet, the world in which I was free and in contact with people. Because my own people ostracized me and treated me like I am abnormal and delusional. They talked and talked about peace, but they didn't show it to me. Look how far you have come chasing after this freedom. I try to remind myself every day because 
I've grown so forgetful thanks to years of overthinking because I've been alone for so long. Too, too long. A Japanese sensei dropping out of school to bring a contaminated lake to life again and all kinds of birds had returned. A real hero to acknowledge and badge. Glad to have lived another day so I could know such things. Watching a father of a school shooting victim on the news cry made my heart break harder. Weapons should be abolished from the face of the earth. There is no need for them. The victim's mother's silence says a lot. The shooter was a confused teenager. Children should be taken away from bad and educated parents. I wish I was God to erase pain and anger from the face of the galaxy. I left that in capital letters because it for some reason automatically chose to amplify that sentence for me by accident. Even though we aren't sure if an accident may be a random roll of dice. When I'm sad and my heart hurts, I always tend to sing instead of cry. When was the last time I ever cried even? The vague and mystique far future of the universe and all the evaporating black holes the human eye will never see. Only nature knows its work. We are only living the way we will be dead long ago soon. It's all a yarn ball. There's no such thing as bad weather. Just weather and your attitude towards it. I said that once to a manager I worked in a restaurant with. He started to manipulate me emotionally even worse and before the public. So I stood up for myself and again resigned because my dignity is expensive. Humans are fascinating with their philosophies, conspiracy theories or just consumption and produce. The ocean is a whole another galaxy, a space of swimming creatures amongst the stars. It would only make sense to see somebody in an astronaut suit dive deep in and walk the bottom of the sea or float. Part 4 Autumn Leaves My Secret Garden In me there's a secret garden of scenic wonders, a thicket of wondrous colorful trees of red and gold and green, of different shades of green, with roots so tangled and black like coal. My heart, the spring, the better of all my seasons. Year after year they grow much denser, wherein I am lost somewhere in the maze of thought, awaiting my rescuer, my knight or princess, to come fetch me, help me find my way out, or live in the comfy cottage with me, I've made out of love, kindness and innocence, by the big and pure royal blue lake of solitude, where they'll share with me the serenity of harvested. Come there, Take a look, stalk me, scream my name and I'll be chasing the gale of misfortune screaming back that I will love you and love you all the way, the way my garden loves and trusts me and we'll be holding hands, our fingers entwined, our eyes flirting, twinkling and the birds are dancing and we'll smile and sigh and cry like lovers in a bed of autumn leaves, together they'll live happily ever after and die.